Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Last year, I took my first deep dive into Rammstein, analyzing their song Deutschland. I thought it was so moving and incredible. Ever since then, I've been wanting to return with something that more prominently features Till Lindemann's vocals, and many of you recommended a piano version of Mein Herz brennt. I totally love this idea. I think it's going to allow us to dig even deeper into Till's vocals. So let's get to it. This is so powerful and incredible. I I am in awe immediately of the way he's using his voice. And it's so funny. Most of you are thinking he's just speaking, but it's not just speaking. He's doing so much more than just speaking. He's elongating the sound of the speech, which really is a kind of singing already. And there are times when you have a really clear pitch, but there are times when it's just a little hazy about is is that a totally true pitch or not and i love the way he's writing that line it sounds like some weird incredible sorcery i'm going back to the beginning immediately this is this vocal production is phenomenal <laughs> sorry that's so amazing i'm like jittery with excitement to hear it again <laughs> I am in awe of what he's doing. It's so, it's so difficult. And most people will think, oh, it's just intense. And it's like intense whispering, but it's, it's like so much more than that. The way he lets the vocal folds relax into this really low pitch, essentially, for this initial, um, sing, sing this speaking. It's almost like Zingstimme, um, or like, um, there's just some fantastic sort of in-between sing speech that happens in classical music. And you hear that really low, like, phonation happening, and then he very expertly crafts it into just a teensy bit of melody at one point. Um, just right where I stopped, that last, st or last phrase had a little more melody in it. But this whole time, there's incredible air that's also flowing on top and we're getting so much sizzling essentially in that extra airy space and he doesn't let the energy ever drop. One of the hardest things in opera is when you have something operatic you've been singing and then you have dialogue afterwards. There's not much in the way of dialogue in most operas. Some people even say that it's not like truly opera but um, you know, there can be bickering over that or whatnot. But the Magic Flute is a great example where you have dialogue in it that is between singing scenes. And it is so difficult to maintain the same level of energy in the dialogue as when you're singing. His dialogue fluidly moving into the singing and pitch is phenomenal. I, I'm going to go back once more. This, it's, so insanely good. <laughs> Ich 
Ich bin die Stimme <lacht> aus dem Kissen. Ich habe euch etwas Just a little bit of melody more now. gebracht. Hab es aus meiner Brust gerissen. Mit diesem Herz hab ich die Macht, die Augenlider zu erpressen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go back again. Uh, there's, there's this really amazing moment in the way that he has an open sound. Like I mentioned that openness and the way he's able to get into some of those lower sounds. And then the way he constrains it just a moment um, for a specific word and then goes back. It's really cool. I'll point it out. Ich etwas mitgebracht. Hab es aus meiner Brust gerissen. Right there. Geriss, gerissen. I think it means like to pull, pull out. And you hear that there's a little more like strain put into the sound on this word. One Einer more time. Brust gerissen. And he has a little bit of melody surrounding it, but right then as he puts a little strain, it's like he almost like purposely will go sharp and what that melody would have been. Oh, the details Einer extraordinary. Brust gerissen. Wow. Mit diesem Herz. Am Firmament, mein Herz brennt. Wow. Ooh, what an interesting shift harmonically at this point. Um, I was loving the way he had that whispering tone over so much, and then you hear it go into um, the air is essentially helping the vocal folds come a little more closed together instead of being expelled with extra whisper on top and you start to get more of that core fundamental tone. He has such amazing control over how much is whisper, meaning no phonation, just that kind of hush on top, and how much is um, really in the the true phonation. Sometimes you can even go to pressed phonation where you have like zero of that extra whisper sound on top. His scale and control between this all is, it's phenomenal. It's just, it gets out of this world. Let's go back just a little bit again. Zu erpressen. Ich singe bis so much low resonance. Schein am Firmament, mein Herz brennt. Sie kommen zu euch in der Nacht. Dämonen, Geister, schwarze Feen. We have so much to talk about, but I had to let it keep going when he started getting into that much more full sound. I love the depth and the tone quality he has when he really gets into this 
fuller kind of singing. It it has a certain classicalness to it. Um, there's uh, the diction is really elevated. Um, it's often what most people consider overdone in modern music. A lot of times with modern music, we're going to make things a little bit more conversational um, and drop out all of the extra ending consonants um, because that feels a little too formal. And he's the exact opposite, right? He's giving us all of the consonants with exceedingly amazing uh, diction. It's just, it's really like drool worthy. This is the kind of diction you expect from an opera singer, right? This is the kind of diction you would expect on like Shakespearean stages. So I think it's so amazing to find it here. And the story, I think he's essentially playing a creepy Sandman as this narrator in here. Um, there's so many moments that are referencing, I believe, the Sandman, which is, um, I have some fun experience with this. Um, it's uh, The Sandman is, you know, known as being something in, in culture that helps children go to sleep, but it's particularly popular in Germany because there's a children's TV show that helps kids go to sleep. And when I was singing opera in Dresden, I got to play the Sandman in Hansel and Gretel. And the costume was like the Sandman from the TV show. I remember uh, floating out on stage on this like flying swing, essentially. And one of those matinees, when all the kids were present, before I even started my first note, I heard this little child voice go, Sandman! <laughs> it's like it's the cutest thing. So anyhow, I'd learned a lot about the show then. And I think he's talking about, um, in some parts, um, Nun liebe Kinder, I believe that this is taken actually from the show. There's moments that I keep hearing, and I'm like, I think that's from the kids' show. So it's really cool. But we have this incredibly creepy overtone that's going with it. It's very dark. And it's uh, instead discussing um, like the darker things of night, like nightmares in it. So <laughs> it's such a fascinating shift to me. And even his makeup um, somehow hints at it. I'm going to go back and talk about a lot of these really amazing moments again. Wow, I, I'm really loving this. <laughs> oh. Sie kommen zu euch. So this like pluck, pluck that the piano is doing actually kind of reminds me of that pluck, pluck in the opera at one point when the Sandman is dropping um, I think it's essentially like little bits of sand or dust to help the children's eyelids grow heavy. I think there's essentially some echoing uh, moments that are feeling lullaby-ish, but also saying in a minor key um, to help lull kids to sleep, but at the same time, they're going to have nightmares possibly while they sleep. Sie kommen zu euch in der Nacht. Der schwarze Feen. <laughs> Sie kriechen aus dem Kellerschacht. <laughs> I love the way he delivers that line. Um, it's essentially like they're, they're like talking about all the monsters and the way they're going to crawl out of the cellar. And you hear his voice rising, not with clear pitch, right? But rising over all. So you hear this creeping monster crawling out of the cellar. <laughs> so cool. Sie kriechen aus dem Keller. Even shows with her hands too. That's so cool. Und werden unter euer Bettzeug sehen. <laughs> Nun, liebe Kinder, gebt fein an. Ich bin die Stimme aus dem Kissen. Ich hab euch etwas mitgebracht. Ein heller Schein am Firmament. Mein Herz brennt. Listen to the amazing way he sang to that the in brennt. He really continues to phonate through that in very um, 
with deliberateness and tons of extra buzz to keep that line going and then continues all the way through the T of it as well. It's just, it's, it's such good diction. <laughs> uh, man, kudos to pianist as well. Um, I think Clemens, I want to say Plutch, maybe, uh, Dresden born as well. And I just love the movement and flow in the piano and the way that certain things are voiced to bring out more melody. It really, it has the perfect, um, it, it swirls in the way you would imagine a dream to swirl, essentially with elements popping into your vision more than they might in other spots. I love it. Um, when he gets going in this section, the quality of his voice really makes me think um, of this full baritone sound. It's quite extraordinary, but there are certain moments where he'll do a little more sliding to tilt it a little bit more towards that speech every now and then. I'll point that out. Right there, so on. Ah, He slides off of that a little bit, and um, <laughs> it makes it uh, it makes it feel like it is Rammstein and not some uh, classical German leader. Liebe Kinder, gebt fein Ich bin die Stimme aus dem Kissen. Same thing on Kissen, um, the way, or Kissen, Kissen, um, the way that he slides in that as well. Another, it feels like very uh, staple of his style. Die Stimme aus dem Kissen. Ich hab euch etwas mitgebracht. Ein heller Schein am Firmament, mein Herz brennt, <laughs> mein Herz brennt. Wow! Oh my gosh, I could be sound! Wow, his, his smile and the way they slowed it down in this video was incredible. By the way, I think that this was... I believe one of the only videos done from this album that they released in 2015, which were these more piano collections. Um, what what a jewel, amazing choice. Everybody who's been recommending things on our YouTube channel. This is incredible. Thank you so much. This is delightful through and through. Oh, and creepy. <laughs> creepy Sandman. Did you hear that like extra little bit of growl on Veinen, which I think is veins? Veinen. He like gives a little extra um, false fold growl with it. In meine kalten Venen. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is, this is the creepiest Sandman ever. <laughs> In meine kalten Venen. Nun, liebe Kinder, gebt fein an. Ich bin die Stimme aus dem Kissen. Oh. Ich singe. I loved the slide off at the end of Kissen this time. It's all the details. They're so good. Aus dem Kissen. Hmm. Ich singe bis der Tag erwacht. Ein heller Schein am Firmament. Mein Herz. Oh, that smile again. I I really wonder how this mein Herz brennt. Like, what is, why is his heart burning? Is it, is it because he, it, the heart is burning because he's bringing nightmares to the kids? Um, or is he is he containing the night or he's away from them? There's a certain vagueness in it. Um, ah, it's really, really fascinating. 
I'm I'm so into the the lyrics of the song and the way that they're playing off of the Sandman and the way that the piano is composed underneath it with this lullaby dreamscape. It's, it's such an amazing composition overall. It's brand. Brand. Wow. Mein Herz brennt. Hmm. Okay. A lot of singers wouldn't like this to be kept in because in this last Mein Herz brennt, he wavers a little bit in the pitch here. But because I hear his voice working so well in this crossover between singing and speaking and the way he's able to merge the two and all of the various gradations of the two as well. When he's, when you hear that pitch varying a little bit in there, it's just incredible expression. It's like he's starting to go into um, something that can't be contained by singing anymore. You hear that wavering? One more time there. Mein Herz brennt. Mein Herz brennt, ja. Mein Herz brennt. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I love this ending. <laughs> I love this ending so much. And suddenly it feels like when we're in this red above, like he's actively um, with the nightmares. And then um, at one point, like he even talks about um, essentially like at the end of the, the moon's time and when the sun comes out, of course, he's going to go away because the children aren't sleeping anymore. Um, I like that that this pit that he goes under uh, down into, it looks like sunlight. And then the sunlight, um, like the way it all darkens, it's like the dream is fading. The sun is coming. And then you have this essence of him escaping the smoke. Oh, my goodness. Also, the beauty of this simple, simple piano at the end. This piano is able to play things that are incredibly complicated, but keeps it in this simple beauty that is so relatable as a lullaby. And the, oh, sorry, one more time. I'm gonna go back a little bit further because the way that he goes back to that mostly spoken um, idea that he was using at the beginning is so, it really brings it full circle as if the whole night has gone through now. Yeah. My. Wow, this is such an incredible performance. This just piano and his voice and the intricacy of the composition and the lyrics and how he delivers them. I'm just, I'm floored. It was moving and uh, I, my mind is still wrapping around this creepy Sandman character. I feel almost speechless at how incredible this performance was. His vocal delivery is 
stunning. I love the way he's able to switch between spoken and sung and the gradations all in between. And he has such a wonderful, rich baritone sound, but then this ability to deliver narration with this hush on top of the voice, barely phonating sometimes. It's so amazing. What an incredible and moving song. You guys were right. This was an amazing, amazing suggestion. If you haven't seen that original video on Deutschland, you can check it out over here. This is such an incredible journey. Thank you to all. I hope to see you in another video soon where we analyze much, much more fantastic music.